So far, there are more continuities than dissimilarities between the Yoon administration and the Moon administration. Their rhetoric is very different. Let's take the example of North Korea. That would be the most obvious. You know, the Moon administration um, was dovish on North Korea, was committed to dialogue and used the language of peacemaking and peace building. And they couldn't quite get as far as they wanted, but they tried very hard to fundamentally improve the relationship with North Korea. Now, the new Yoon administration is different. They don't talk about peace and a breakthrough and a dramatic improvement on the Korean Peninsula. So that's probably where we see the, the starkest difference between them. All that said, you know, there's a lot of status quo in terms of where we are. And the Yoon administration doesn't, you know, they may not be as eager for peace. That doesn't mean they want conflict or war with North Korea. And so we're still in this kind of no man's land in terms of inter-Korean relations. I would say the same applies to how the Yoon administration uses a different language towards the United States, uh, typical of South Korean conservatives, uh, very pro-alliance, you know, the loyal ally. Whereas, whereas it was a little colder with the Moon administration. But in actual fact, we haven't seen much substantive difference in the policies of Yoon versus Moon. And in fact, there are a lot of problems in the U.S.-South Korea relationship right now, mostly trade tensions. Uh, and so, you know, on, on the surface, the rhetoric is, okay, now we've restored a strong alliance. In reality, I would say the alliance was actually in good shape. Uh, but it has tensions and those tensions continue now. So six months in or so to the Yoon administration, there's probably more continuity than there is a really sharp break from the past. As far as Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we see more continuity than change in terms of the Yoon administration. There's not been a dramatic turn in the policy. South Korea has tried to do the, the minimum that it should as a ally of the United States and a fellow liberal democracy. And the general sentiment here is supportive of Ukraine and its cause. And there's a recognition that Russia's invasion is an attack on the whole world system. That said, Relations were okay with Russia. South Koreans were not uh, among the countries that were really upset and concerned about Russian infiltration in their society and things of that nature. And there's a feeling broadly in South Korea that Ukraine is far away. There's a degree of detachment from the war. And so we have not seen President Yoon really seize on the Ukraine issue and uh, act in dramatic ways to provide military assistance, for example, directly to the Ukrainians. So there's a lot of continuity there. I would say a major impact of this war that Russia is fighting is the distraction that it brings about in terms of the United States and Europe from uh, their focus is, is really now much more on the transatlantic relationships and on defending Europe uh, and its near border from Russian aggression. And so that takes the eye off the ball in terms of this region in, in East Asia and the Asia Pacific. And that ultimately hurts South Korea a little bit because uh, the United States and Europe, their attention is clearly elsewhere. And so that makes it a bit harder for South Korea to navigate its neighborhood. I do think in Washington there was some excitement over the return of conservatives to power in South Korea for the simple fact that conservative politicians, including President Yoon, use a, a much friendlier rhetoric toward the United States. Um, I think there was a problem though, because actually if you looked at it, uh, the US ROK alliance was in good shape and it's proven not that easy to improve the relationship. Uh, so the, the rhetoric established some expectations that perhaps have been disappointed uh, from Washington's perspective. Meanwhile, in Seoul, uh, there's been an accumulation of grievances against the United States 
in particular over the Biden administration's uh, industrial and trade policy that are really hurting Korean companies and Korean economic interests. So there's, there's quite a bit of tension in the relationship. And so I think there was initially a, a lot of hopes in Washington, and now the reality has settled in uh, that it's not going to be that easy to sort of move uh, the alliance forward. President Yoon has signaled he wants a good relationship with Beijing. In fact, the invitation to President Xi Jinping uh, heading into what is presumably his third term in office, you know, remains open. Uh, and there are a lot of other ways in which the Yoon administration has signaled to China that they want to get along, that they don't want to go back to the dark days of sanctions over missile systems and all of the, the bad history that we've seen between South Korea and China quite recently. So again, you see quite a bit of continuity because the Moon administration also wanted a good relationship with China, but they recognize that China's unpopular with the South Korean people and that there are other reasons, there are natural limits on how far you can go. So again, we've not seen a dramatic swing. There were hopes in Washington that a conservative administration in Seoul would mean this sudden toughening up on China and South Korea looking more like Australia or Japan in terms of using this tough language calling out China. And so far we, we haven't seen that in the new administration in, in South Korea. You know, the signals from Beijing have been very strong that they want a good relationship with Yun. They've avoided things that might antagonize South Korea. And so China looks like it wants to try to preserve some of the gains that it's had in terms of keeping an, a, a stable and decent political relationship with Seoul. Uh, China remains widely unpopular with the South Korean public and those trends sort of continue, but a quarter of the South Korean economy depends upon China. And everyone knows that on both sides of the Yellow Sea. Uh, and, and of course, China benefits a lot from its relationship with South Korea. So there's there's been a sort of consistency in Xi Jinping uh, in terms of trying to maintain a good relationship with Seoul so far. For the near future, it looks like the relationship between the two Koreas is going to keep going from bad to worse. And there are even some possibilities of a, of a pretty dramatic uh, fall off the cliff where the cycle that we're in now of provocation and deterrence between the North and the South spirals down to a point where there's actually some conflict. And that would not be shocking. That would not be new. We've seen that pattern play out uh, over the last decade plus. And we are sort of heading in that direction. Uh, and it's not clear that we have an off-ramp insofar as the North Koreans, Kim Jong-un, look pretty set in their ways. They're not giving up their nuclear capability and they are testing more and more delivery systems, missile systems. And of course that's aggravating everyone. North Korea also probably feels it has room to do that because of the war in Ukraine and the geopolitical focus on Ukraine and Europe right now. Uh, rather than a focus here on this region. So the North Koreans are, they have room to, to run. Meanwhile, the UN administration, well, they, they talked about an audacious plan and they talked about, uh, dangled the possibility of improving relations with North Korea. But the focus of the administration has been to toughen up, you know, to uh, resume large scale joint military exercises with the United States, to use tougher language against North Korea, whether it's human rights or the weapons tests, uh, you know, to not try hard to cool down the temperature, but to go ahead and raise it uh, with each step that the North Koreans take. So it, it's a formula for conflict, and that looks like where we're heading. Now, all that said, uh, if you look at the track record of conservative administrations, they tend to, you know, talk very tough and think that you need a tougher line, but then they often end up wanting or needing 
to engage in dialogue with the North Koreans. I would not be surprised if after a period of confrontation, uh, the Yoon administration ends up talking to uh, the Kim Jong-un government in some capacity. Uh, that could be a year from now, but that wouldn't be surprising either. When President Yoon came into office, you know, he and his advisors recognized there was one seemingly easy place to improve Korea's foreign relations, and that is in the relationship with Japan. You know, things have got, had gotten very bad in the Moon years, but it didn't start, of course, with President Moon. You know, he, he inherited a legacy of um, declining relations for, for many years. And so there were some obvious ways in which Korea and Japan, if they wanted to, could at least identify certain areas where they, they can and should cooperate. Uh, and we've seen some of that improvement in relations and the tenor of the relationship is a little bit better. However, what I think we're seeing is that once a South Korean leader signaled quite clearly that he wanted to improve relations, unfortunately, the Japanese leader said, okay, great, you want to improve relations, here's all the things that we want. And so, for example, it's been difficult for President Yoon to, to just get a, a summit with uh, Prime Minister Kishida in Japan to start the discussion about how you're gonna improve relations. It certainly looked like the Japanese are withholding that to get things from the South Koreans before you can even have a meeting. And that creates a very negative impression, obviously in the South, and that actually narrows the room that President Yoon has to improve the relationship. So I think from a South Korean perspective, it's been disappointing that the administration in Japan has not also seized this opportunity, but instead is sort of playing hardball to get what they want. And that's a recipe for continued stalemate or decline in the relationship. We should add that the United States is always hovering over Korea-Japan relations and the Biden administration, unlike the Trump administration, very much values allies getting along and has tried hard to encourage both South Korea and Japan to improve their relationship. But even with that renewed encouragement, maybe pressure from Washington, still this bilateral relationship is so difficult. Uh, we have not seen a breakthrough so far. I'd say because of President Yoon's desire to improve relations, things are inching a little bit in a more promising direction. But from a Korean vantage point, uh, Japan has not seized the opportunity, and so we haven't seen actually any real breakthroughs. President Yoon came in with a pretty difficult hand to play. You have U.S.-China tensions fundamentally affecting that relationship, and those are the two most important countries for South Korea. That relationship between the U.S. and China is getting worse, and that narrows the room for South Korea to not make a choice. North Korea's nuclear and missile program has resumed this pace of testing that is deeply disconcerting, and there's no prospect of North Korea giving up its nukes. And in fact, they just keep improving that capability. And meanwhile, uh, Russia has launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine and the whole world, uh, or at least the West, is focused on stopping that. And so there is less attention uh, to a country like South Korea. And South Korea feels a bit more alone in the region. The one country that South Korea on paper, uh, you'd think could be able to get closer to is Japan. Uh, and while there's been some modest improvement, there's no sign actually of a breakthrough there. So the prospect for the remainder of the Yun term is pretty bleak. We are not on the cusp of a breakthrough with North Korea. That's likely to get worse. We're not on the cusp of a breakthrough with Japan because the impediments there are, are quite high. Uh, and in, in terms of the geopolitical driving force, U.S.-China relations 
all signs are that that relationship is going to keep getting worse and and that hurts south korea in terms of its security and economic position so you know president yoon is facing a fairly bleak future in terms of korea's foreign relations and it's going to be a tough slog for him toward the end of his term in all likelihood standing where we are now of course uh, I'm a historian, so the last thing I would do is predict the future. You never know what's going to happen, but it looks like a tough road ahead.